Hey everybody, this is Ryan DeGregorio, one of Wyoming Stargazing's program leaders. Thank you for joining me and welcome to Mind Bending Astronomy. In every episode, we'll share with you, well, a mind bending fact about astronomy. Last time, we looked at dark energy, the mysterious force that is causing space itself to expand, and as a result, moving galaxies farther apart from one another. Today, we'll talk about dark matter, an entity just as exotic but responsible for something totally different. Dark matter gets its name because it does not interact at all with the electromagnetic force, but instead interacts with gravity. So no light is ever reflected, absorbed, or emitted by dark matter. So how do we know about it? Back in the 1930s, an astronomer named Fritz Zwicky was observing the coma cluster of galaxies. He noticed that there simply wasn't enough visible matter to be keeping the stars gravitationally bound. Zwicky calculated that all of the stellar matter provided only 1% of the mass needed to keep the cluster from breaking apart. Four decades later, the observation was confirmed by an astronomer named Vera Rubin. She surveyed several galaxies and concluded that the mass of the stars is a small fraction of what is required to keep them in orbit. Here's what should happen if dark matter didn't exist. The orbital speeds of stars would decrease gradually as you moved farther out from the center. What is really happening, what these astronomers observed, is that the orbital speeds are staying constant with distance, or sometimes even getting faster. And attached in the transcript is an image of this graph for the Triangulum Galaxy. And the only way to account for this excess velocity is that the whole mass of the galaxy must be far greater than what can be seen, perhaps up to 10 times more massive. As of right now, there are two contenders for what dark matter could be. They're called machos and they're called wimps. Machos are massive compact halo objects and wimps are weakly interacting massive particles. Machos may be one of a handful of different objects. They could be black holes, neutron stars, rogue planets, or brown dwarfs. And these objects are extremely hard to detect because they emit little to no light of their own. A WIMP is a hypothetical particle that may be abundant in number, but may be virtually undetectable. The way to search for WIMPs is to look for products of self-annihilation or to create them in particle colliders. When WIMPs annihilate, they produce gamma rays, neutrinos, and cosmic rays. At the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland, attempts to create WIMPs are made by accelerating and smashing together subatomic particles that result in new ones. One way to try to uncover dark matter's identity is to use gravitational microlensing. And lensing occurs when a massive object is in between an observer and a distant source of light. Because massive objects exert, exert a force of gravity, light will bend around it. Therefore, the light we observe will be in a slightly different position than the actual source. Gravitational lenses can be used to constrain the location and properties of dark matter. But as of right now, no lensing events have provided solutions to the dark matter problem. Dark matter outnumbers ordinary matter six to one. There is lots to be learned about its nature. Just because we can't see it or feel it doesn't mean we can't discover more about it. And join us next week for another talk about the cosmos.